This is Wendell Scott. He was the first African American to drive for NASCAR. He was born on August 20, 20, 29, 1921, Danville. He died on December 23, 1990. He died by spinal cancer. He had two children and a wife. He won one race. He was he he was 25 when he had his first race. When he had his first race, he had borrowed a car. He made his own cars. When he was raising his children to help him, he was the only African American to not have adults helping him. Since he retired, no African American have drive. The bus company gave up black people were able to ride in any seat they any seat on the bus. The Montgomery bus boycott was successful and showed blacks and whites that standing up for what's right could change things. This happened because one strong, tired lady who would not give her seat up on the bus. Understanding the world is not the world is not all about white and black. It's about all people. Rosa Parks died of natural causes at the age of 92 on October 24, 2005, in her apartment on the east side of the city. <coughs> She and her husband never had children, and she outlived her own music. A great African American person is George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was born in the year of 1860 in the state of Missouri. The exact date and year of his birth are unknown because he was born into slavery. He and his parents were owned by Mose Carver. That is why his last name is Carver. In fact, he was known as George Carver because this man was his, his owner. owner. It was Mose Carver's wife that taught George Washington how to read and write. George Washington Carver graduated high school and went to college. This did not help with many African Americans in the 80s, 1880s. His first college did not accept him because of his color of his skin, but did not stop Mr. Carver when he went to the college in low, low A and received his forge and master degree. George Washington Carver was born, was very smart man. He was a teacher, farmer, and and scientist and engineer. He was very respectful in the United States and around the world. He, his parents would ask him for advice. Mr. Carver is best known to the participant for the many things he was able to do. The, the peanuts he invented over 100 using for the peanuts. He also made different use for sweet potatoes, pecans, and soybeans. He invented plastic. Plastic. Plastics dyes, paints, and even gas for cars. One day, George Rustin Carver took a bad fall down his stairs. He was found by a maid who took him to a hospital where he died. 
George Washington Carver died on January 5th, 1943, at the age of 78. He is buried next to Booker T. Washington, another great African American in history. I am Virginia Hamilton. I am a children's book author. My family encouraged me to read and write wildly. I was born on March 12, 1934, in Ohio. I am married to Arnold Adolph. Say hi, Arnold. Hi. Oh, no, no, no. Why don't you stay up here and tell the audience about yourself after I'm done? Hmm? Okay. Many of my books I have wrote have won many, many awards, like this book, M.C. Higgins the Great. So I'm a multi-award winning African American, and I wrote 41 books. Can you believe that? I also have two children, a girl named Leah and a boy named Jamie. They are truly wonderful children. Come on up, kids. Aw, thanks, Mom. Hi, guys. I'm Leah. Okay, Arnold. Now you can tell the audience about you. Okay, so, I was born on July 16th, 1935, in Bronx, New York, and I will always try to learn sights, turn sights and sounds into words. I will always try to shape words into my singing poems. I began writing for kids because I wanted to effect a change in American society. I continue in that spirit. By the time we people reach adulthood, we are closed and set in our attitudes. The chances of a poet reaching us are very slim. But I can open a child's imagination, develop his appetite for poetry, and more importantly, show him that poetry is a natural part of everyday life. We all need someone to point out the emperor is wearing no clothes. That's the poet's job. Wow. I married this lovely woman next to me in 1960. Why don't you give the audience a taste of one of your speeches? Hmm? Aw, oh, thank you. You're very welcome. I don't want to bore you with a whole speech. So I'll just tell a little bit. It is my great pleasure to accept the Newberry Medal for M.C. Higgins the Great. I am so very gr grateful to the American Library so Association, whose Newberry Caldecott Committee selected M.C. Higgins the Great as the most distinguished book for children in America in 1974. Virginia Hamilton became very sick with breast cancer and died on February 19, 2002. If you would like to learn more about her and the book she wrote, please research Virginia Hamilton. Thank you. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is one of the greatest African American leaders of the African American Civil Rights Movement. 
Dr. King was born on January 15, 1929, in Atlanta, Georgia. He was married and had four kids. He was assassinated on April 4, 1968, in Memphis, Tennessee, at the age 39 years old. In 1955, he led the Montgomery bus boycott and was president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1957. Dr. King led Birmingham, Alabama movement to fight segregation. In 1963, he delivered the famous speech, I Have a Dream, at the March of Washington in Washington, D.C. He led the Silver to Montgomery March in 1965. <coughs> On April 4, 1968, in Memphis, Tennessee, Dr. King was planning a national campaign to be called the Poor People's Campaign. He was assassinated on the balcony of the Lorraine Hotel. Dr. King received several awards. One was the Nobel Peace Prize in, 19, in 1964 for combating racial equality through nonviolence. In 1986, Martin Luther King Jr. Day became a federal holiday. Parts of the speech, I have a dream. I'm, I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration of freedom in in the nation of our in the history of our nation i have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where, where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character when we allow freedom to reign when we let it ring from every city and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we'll be able to speed up that day when all the, uh, God's children, white men, black men, <coughs> will be able to join hands to s and to sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, Great God Almighty, we are free at last. Rosa Parks was the first African American to ride the bus. She was the first African American to ride with white people. She always had to ride in the back of the bus because of her skin. Rosa Parks was the was one of the civil rights movement with her with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. First act of Defiance and the Montgomery bus boycott. She was. I didn't know you had sound. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she was the African American civil rights rights activist. Her birthday, February fourth, the day she was arrested. December first has both become Rosa Parks Day. This is a picture of what the bus looked like in back back in her times. <laughs> you and I should have gotten together. <laughs> I don't see it. Oh, okay. All right. It's not you, it's your help. It's not the only way. It's me. <laughs> Buses back then look different from buses today. Rosa Parks died on October 24, 2005. Rosa Parks was a sweet and kind person. She didn't need to die because of her skin color. When black and white should be happy with themselves, it doesn't matter if your skin's different. Let's start. Jackie Robinson was born in Georgia 19, in 1919. 
his family were poor. So they moved to California to make a better life. Jackie was went to school. He also worked to earn money for his family while going to school. He became very good at sports. So good that he went to college on his, on his scholarship. Jackie played football, basketball, and track. He was one of the best players in the country. Jackie Robertson is famous for being the first black American to play in a, the all white Major League Baseball. He was visible for that, but he was wanted to show everyone that he can be do he he can do it. Jackie Robinson was a strong and brave man. He was married to Rachel Robinson. She also worked went to college and became a nurse. They had three kids <coughs> on he October twenty fourth, nineteen twenty seventy two. Jackie Robinson <coughs> died in of a heart attack. He was at fifty three years old over two thousand five hundred people came to his funeral. was born on September 8, 1954. Her place of birth was in Tyler Town, Mississippi. <coughs> when Ruby was about four, her family moved from Tyler Town to New Orleans. She was the first African American to enter the school that was for whites only. November 14, 1960 was the first day of school for Ruby. For the rest of the year, Ruby was the only child in the classroom. She wondered, <coughs> why am I the only child in here? Miss Henry wasn't supposed to tell her why, but she did. Ruby was inspired by the painting, 1966 painting, by Norman Rockwell.
Ruby was later reunited as an adult with her former teacher, Miss Henry. She was awarded the Presidential Citizen Medal in 2001 by President Bill Clinton. <laughs> Ruby, being the first African American to integrate William Ford School, paved the way for others, including her four nieces, who attended the same school years after Ruby walked those very same halls. I have one question. Have you heard of the Peanut Man, or otherwise known as George Washington Carver? His exact date of birth is unknown as an effect from him being born into slavery in Missouri, which is in northern Arkansas. When he was Excuse me. When he was about your age, he was nicknamed the Peanut Man because when he was young, he spent a lot of time with plants and, out and being outside. By the way, he did not invent peanuts or peanut butter, but he made a version of peanut butter instead. He was so into plants that he, he started doing botany, which is the study of plants. He would rather work to make people happy instead of just working for the money. So, any of this really. It didn't really matter. He just wanted to make other people happy instead. Oh, and Luke, he was for of these jobs and more. a botanist, a scientist, a chemistrist, and an inventor. He recommended growing peanuts so that way the soil and the the nutrients in the soil would change a little, and some of the bugs messing up the garden would start going away. But he's mainly famous because he was a world famous chemistrist. He, he found important discoveries and, and made important inventions. He used food to make some of his inventions like peanuts and sweet potatoes and more. He died, it, he died on January 5th, 1943. Now you know the peanut man. Thorgood Marshall was born on July 2nd, 1908. As he was growing up, white and colored people were separated. It was called segregation. So that meant white and colored children could not go to the same school. Thorough good parents wanted him to be a dentist, but he wanted to be a lawyer. When he grew up, he went to college and applied for law school, but they turned him down because he was black. So he went to University Howard instead in Washington, D.C., where color and, and white people could go. Thorgood Marshall graduated from law school in 1933 at the top of his class. Thorgood became a lawyer, and he wanted to end the segregation. So he took the case, Brown versus the Board of Education, and he won. After the children of different colors, after that the children of different colors could go to the same school. If it wasn't for Thorogood, if it wasn't for people like Thorogood and Marshall, it would have took longer for the segregation to end. In 1967, President Lord, Lord and Johnson named Thurgood Marshall to the 
Super Court. We owe a lot of thanks to the lawyer Thorgood Marshall and the judge Thorgood Marshall. Two important jobs done by one great man. Morton was born in Ghana. He liked soccer as a kid, but as he grew up, he became the best, first black professional football player. He lived with a wealthy family, political. His parents were mixed race. His mother was half Scottish and half Dante from the royal family of Kung Fu. His father was half Scottish and half Guinea. He later came to England with the, the intention of receiving training and became a mentalist preacher. However, he turned out to be a great athlete. He also became the first man to run 100 yards in 10 seconds at the National Championship at Stanford Bridge. Whenever he played soccer as a goalkeeper for Preston North, Stockport County, Sheffield North, and Hatton North End. Many football, football fans didn't like him, and a few people did. And, more, more, and then more people started like him, like, and more. Then a whole, then a whole bunch of people like Arthur, Arthur Wharton died in 1930, 1865 to 1930. Then in 1933, Joe Lord and Ray Kemp began playing soccer. Arthur Wharton football united, unite, raise them. Mighty raised a thousand pound grace in his honor. Today, many black pe pe people play soccer. Martin Luther King was born on January 34, 1919. <coughs> his workplace was Georgia. Jackie Robinson played many sports. Jackie Robinson attended to UCLA College. He was a good student and athlete. Jackie Robinson lived in 1955 World Series. He was the MVP in 1949. He was nominated in the Hall of Fame in 1962. And his Baseball career, he received 12 penalties. Jackie Robinson was the first African American that to make the major leagues in baseball. He won the World Series in 1971. In 1972, he makes his 3,000 hit. The Black Sox was the baseball team named after Jackie Robinson. Martin, Martin Luther King, Mr. Anderson's class, classroom, Kevin Nagy. Um, this is this word he um. This is where, where um, he went to church, and and family life. Martin Luther King Jr. had an <coughs> a old older sister and a younger brother. Martin Luther King had a rock white friend. <coughs> Martin Luther King was born 
January, January 15, 1929. He died at April 4, 1968. We went, went, he went to elementary school, F-A-M-E Academy. F-A-M-E Academy. He went to, to high school, T. Washington. <coughs> he, he studied at a very logical cinnamon in Pennsylvania. Martin Luther King Jr. Faith is talking the first step everyone even when you can't see the whole staircase think about that think about that quote faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the staircase just think about that. You have to have great faith and belief in something or yourself. If you step and try to walk down some stairs and you can't even see the stairs. Mm -hmm. It takes faith. Think about that. His life. Martin Martin was a American pa pastor activist humanitarian and leader in the African American civil rights using nonviolent silver movement. He is best known at, for his role, role in the advancements of several rights as using non-violent civil disobedience based based on his Christian beliefs in 1963, he became a very important leader of the boycott and forced association, rounding, rounding up to 250,000 people in front of the White House which was the Silver Rights March. His death, his death was fatal. His death was fatal, I guess it was. And then he died in 1968. At first, he had a lot of threats which caused to find a one and actually got killed. He was 39 years old when he died. He, he was assassinated, assassinated in the hotel Lorraine and Memphis actually before he died he was ca ca captured and went to jail back to 
subject the one who killed MLK was James Earl Rain. He was captured at the airport and when he got captured the first time he escaped later on he was captured again. This was everything I could research, research about this very important person. Symbolic defense and Mr. Anderson, fourth grade class. Al D. Gibson was born August 25th, 1927, in the town of Silver in Clarendon County, South Carolina. She died at the age of 76 on September 28, 2003. Adia Gibson was famous for being the first black woman to play professional tennis and golf. She retired in the year of 1958. In 1956, she became the first person of color to win a Grand Slam title at the French Open. In, in the early 1960s, she also became the first black player to compete on the women's professional golf tour. Althea Gibson also got compared to Jackie Robinson because she was the first black woman to play tennis and Jack in, in golf. And Jackie Robinson was the first black male to play baseball. I think that was a good comparison because they were the both the first black people to play any sports. In 1950, in response to intense lobbying by ATA officials and Elise Marble, who published a skeptic open letter in the magazine American Law Tennis, Althea Gibson received an invitation to compete in the United States National Championships now the U.S. Open at Forest Hills. She was the first black player to, to be ever, ever selected and made her debut on her 23rd birthday. 1957 was, in her own words, Althea Gibson's year. In late 1958, having won 56 national and international singles in doubles, titles, including 11 Grand Slam championships. Gibson retired from amateur tennis, from amateur tennis. In, in my opinion, Althea Gibson was a wonderful African-American woman, and she deserved to be in history. One day, I want to go up and play professional tennis like Althea. as Isabella Bone Free and Swart Kill in Worcester County, New York. She was she was one of the ten Artel children born to James Afri Africans with Isabella Bone Free Africans captured from the Gold Coast in modern day Jimmy. She, she was bought by slaveholder John Dumont in Leicester County, New York. Isabella was sold many times in her in her young and married Thomas. Together they had five children beginning in 1799. Emancipation was finalized on July 4, 1827. Doing what, knowing this was to a skirt 
had promised to grant Isabella her freedom on July 4, 1826. She, if she would be well and be hateful on that day, on that day, however, however, he changed his mind. A hand injury had made her less productive, and Isabella remained long enough to spend 100 pounds of wool satisfying her obligation to do it. She then escaped with her infant daughter Sophia leaving behind her other children because a New York emanc emancipation order did not permit the, their freedom until they had served a bound servants into, these, into their 20s. Isabella explained, I did not run off for I thought that we, I, but I walked off believing that to be all right. Isabella was taken by Isaac and Mary Van Bergener, who paid her remaining one year service account with the Dumont for $20. One year later, New York law emancipated all slaves, but Dumont had already sold Peter Isabella's five-year-old five child into slavery in Alabama. Isabella sued in court with the help of the Wagoners to recover her son. She became to fir the first black woman to win such a case against a white man. Isabella became a diva, devout Christian during the stay with the Van Wagoners. In 1843, believing that she received inductions from the Holy Spirit, she took the name Sojourn the Truth. She remarked to her friends, the Spirit calls me, I must go. Sojourn had become a Methos and became a traveling pe preacher in honor for her new name. She joined the North Ham North Association of Education and Industry that was found by a in 1844. The organization was also supporting women's rights while the North Hamilton, Massachusetts, Sojourner met Frederick Douglass, William Lloyd Jr. Jerry son and David Wigglis. In 1850, William Lloyd Jerson privately punished her book in the narrative of Sojourner Truth and North End Slave. In the 1850s, Sojourner spoke before hundreds of people. The Hawaii anti slavery bugle championed her cause, her cause of enabling her to travel around the state speaking. She also spoke a in a sub sub gets mob conversation at the Broadway tab tabernacle in New York City. John Lewis has seventy two pro professional fights with only three bruises. He took T told 57 knockouts are and held the championship from 1957 to 1949. The longest span of any heavyweight title holder. Lewis made his debut in early 1932 at age 17. Legend, legend has it, it that before the fight, the the barely literate Lewis wrote his last name, and th thus became known as Joe Lewis. From the reminder of his boxing career, Lewis died of heart cardiac arrest in Desert Spring Hospital near. L L L Las Vegas on April 12, 1981.
John Lewis wanted to, to enlist as a private in the United States Army at Camp Vilton, Long Island. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born was born January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was killed April 4, 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee. One of his most famous sayings was life's most persistent and urgent questions is what are you doing for others? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was was married to Coretta, Coretta Scott King, they have four children, Martin Luther King III, Dexter Scott King, Yolanda King, and three. Regina. Bernice. Bernice King. The, the Montgomery bus boycott started when Rosa Parks was coming was going home from work and she decided to sit at the front of the bus. So when a Caucasian passenger came along and said that she needed to move, she refused not she refused to move. So she got arrested and then that's what started the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955 which led to the southern the southern christian leadership conference in 1957 where dr martin luther king jr met ministers from churches so and they decided to fight segregation with peace instead of violence so they marched did did sit-ins and boycott it. March march on what on Washington jobs for on Washington for jobs and freedom is where Dr. Martin Luther King gave his famous I have a dream speech and here's something that he said I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. And the Augustine and Selma in 1964 was when Caucasian people used to beat, beat black people with sticks, spray them with water hoses, spread them on water hoses and the black people, most of the black people would get arrested and some of the black people were hurt so bad that they were killed. And Martin Luther King Jr. got arrested and he said, still, if you get arrested, just do what they tell you and don't fight with violence, fight with peace. And he was and he was rewarded the man of the year, man of the year award, Times Person of the Year, 1963, the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964, at least 50 honorary degrees from colleges or uni and universities, and several other awards. His dream was to end segregation, the rights, the rights for black people to vote, and e equality. The results, the results, Civil Rights Act of 1964, Voting Rights Act of 1965, and they built a statue of Dr. Martin Luther King in. Washington D.C. where they put one of his another one of his famous sayings is I was a drill major for justice, peace, and righteousness. 
and I think we should keep his dream alive. I don't know civil rights leader and activist who had a lot of influence on America society. In the 1950s and 60s, he, be he believed in nonviolent protests and helped set the tone of the movement with boycotts, protests, and marches. Eventually, laws were passed against racial discrimination, which we are still fighting today. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968. Because of his beliefs, he died, but his, but, but his ideas still lived on. It's up to us, me and you, to make his dreams come true. Today I am telling the story of Emmett Till. In the 1950s, drinking fountains were segregated, restrooms were segregated, and even movie theaters were segregated. White people were making outrageous deaths to black people at that time. Emmett went to visit his, his uncle in Money, Mississippi, but before he left to Money, Mississippi, his mother gave him his father's ring. Emmett's father was a private in the United States Army during World War II. Emmett Till's mother was, was by all accounts an extraordinary woman. Mary Till was the, was the only fourth black woman in the, <coughs> was, was the only fourth black student to graduate from suburban, predominantly white Arlo High School and the first black student to make the, the school's A's on a roll. Once, one, one Sunday afternoon, Emmett and, his, Emmett and a group of teenagers went to a store and on Emmett's way out the, the store, he looked over and whistled to a white woman named Carolyn Bryant. And that night, Emmett, two, two white men came to Emmett's uncle's house and kidnapped Emmett, taking him to the woods, being and they beat his face so badly that three weeks later at the funeral, the only way Emmett's mother knew it was him by the ring that she gave him. A few days after Emmett was killed, a boy fishing saw a body that could have been Emmett. At Summer, Mississippi, September 1955 is where the trial began. The, the person that Emmett whistled to was the store's white female clerk and the wife of, of the owner, Carolyn Bryant. Four days later, Warren Bryant and his half-brother, J.W. Milo, were the defendants. Moe's Wright, the uncle of Emmett Till, put his life to risk against the defendants, Roy and J.W. Milo. The defendants were uh, acquitted for the trial. Nobody served time in jail for Emmett's murder. Days after Emmett's murder, the year-long Montgomery bus boycott started. Also, Emmett's death. Also, after Emmett's death, black men who would have never stood up for the whites began to. People who that people that who were not vocalized began to be vocalized. Emmett's death began the civil rights movement. Emmett's death was the reason he he was important in the whole black history. I think it's wrong to judge people because of their skin color. I think people should be judged by their actions and their hearts. Hello. Today I will give a report on Oprah Gail Winfrey. Oprah was born in the royal town of Costco. Mississippi on January the 29th, 1954. Oprah Winfrey, who is still living today, is the first African American billionaire. She is a television host, actress, producer, and philanthropist. 
philanthropist and entrepreneur. 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 In 1976, Winfrey moved to Baltimore, where she hosted a hit TV show, chat show, People Are Talking. Afterwards, she was recruited by sh by a Chicago TV show to host her own morning show. She later became the host of her own widely popular program, The Upper Show. Um, which aired for 25 seasons from 1986 to 2011. That same year, Winfrey launched her own TV network, the, Oph the Oprah Winfrey Network. She played a role in the Steven Spielberg's 1985 film, The Color Purple, for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Can you please get up? No, I've been in work all day and I'm tired. It's a really sick baby. Well, you have to because it's against the law. No. If you don't get up, I have to go. I have to call the police. Do whatever you gotta do. Rosa Parks was born in Tuskegee, Alabama on February 4th, 1913. Rosa Parks died when she was 92 years old. She, she died October 24th, 2005. Rosa Parks' full name was Rosa Louis McCauley. She moved to Montgomery, Alabama at age 11. Rosa Parks refused to get out of her seat on her bus. The laws at that time, all African American people had to ride the bus, in the back of the bus. If the if a Caucasian rider wanted their seat, that is what led her to go to jail for her beliefs. This treatment of Rosa Parks was unfair because her treatment, African Americans stopped riding the bus in Montgomery, Alabama. This is what, this is what, called the Montgomery Bus Boycott. A boycott is a type of protest. This this protest was a big part of civil rights movement. Rosa Parks was born in on African American hero. 